This user on Reddit is wondering, starting a podcast, is it worth it? Especially these days with TikTok and Instagram and YouTube. Well, back in 2012, my friend Kyle Fox reached out to me and said, do you want to make a podcast together? And we wanted to talk about other tech startups we were into, interview the founders, figure out how they made products that people loved. We came up with a name, Product People, and then we both bought cheap microphones like this. Started recording on Skype. You remember Skype? And we recorded an episode every week for 50 weeks. It wasn't always easy to show up week after week. Sometimes it was hard to get guests on the show. Sometimes we'd get a guest and the interview wouldn't work out very well. But we did all of these episodes. And eventually we got to over 100 podcast episodes. And I can say that that podcast, without question, led to every good thing that happened in my career since then. And the reason is we didn't have a ton of listeners, but we were able to build a small audience of people that were passionate about the same things we were, building software products, building products that people loved. And some of that audience ended up being employers who reached out and wanted to hire us. Some of those people ended up being lifelong friends that introduced us to other people that helped us in our careers and our businesses. The thing about podcasting is even if you don't get a lot of listeners, if you're showing up consistently and the right people are listening, you're increasing what's called your luck surface area. Meaning by showing up episode after episode, by interacting with an audience, by talking about things that you're excited about, by sharing your life with people, you're building connections. You're building connections with the guests that you bring on, and you're building connections with the audience. And it's those connections that can lead to opportunities down the road. For example, one of the people I interviewed on that podcast was Chase Reeves. These days, he has a really fun YouTube channel where he reviews bags. I've got my phone in one hand, maybe a croissant in the other. But back then, he was working for a tech startup, and him and I hit it off. And he said, hey, I think you should come and hang out with me and my friends at this festival. And so after he invited me a few times, I said yes. I booked a ticket, went down, and I met all sorts of really interesting people at that conference. One of the people I met was John Buddha. And we connected over podcasting. I was telling him about the podcast I was doing. He was interested in building tools for podcasters. And then every year after that, so 2014, 15, 16, 17, we would get together. We would talk about projects we were working on. We would talk about things that were going on in our lives. And then late 2017, he said, hey, I'm working on a new project. I want to show it to you. And that project was Transistor, the podcast hosting startup him and I run together today. Transistor has been by far the most interesting, compelling, life-giving project I've worked on. It's become an incredible company. But if I had never started that podcast, if I had never published all those episodes, if I'd never invited Chase to be on the show, I would have never met my business partner and we wouldn't be here today. This is the kind of serendipity that you can get when you start a podcast. It's a simple way to build connections with interesting people and an interested audience. And those connections can lead to all sorts of opportunities that you can't even imagine in the future. How do they make sense of it? Or how, how would you approach that in terms of a like, what do I do with this as a creator? Podcasting is different from other types of media like TikTok and Twitter and Facebook and even YouTube in some key ways. One is when people are listening to a podcast, they're usually completely there. They're either driving home from work or walking the dog or doing the dishes. There's nothing else on their screen that is distracting them. It's very personal. It's very intimate. And they're spending a lot of time with you, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, every episode, and often over a long period of time. And what that enables, better than any kind of medium, is this very personal relationship that you get with the audience. I've been at a conference and people have recognized me just by my voice because they've spent so much time with me in their car, on their walk, doing chores, that they feel like they know me. 
and you just don't get that kind of depth with any other medium. So is it worth creating a podcast today? Yes, especially if you commit yourself to creating a meaningful connection between you and your audience and you and your guest. And if you do that episode after episode, week after week, month after month, year after year, I guarantee you it will have a meaningful impact on your life. This changed my life. By the way, if you're one of those people that started a podcast, I'd love to hear how it impacted your life. Share your story in the comments so everybody can see it. And if you're interested in starting a podcast, we have a great guide. Just head over to transistor.fm slash start, and you can read our how to start a podcast guide. It's got everything you need to know from equipment to software, editing. It's all right there. And this could be the year that you start something that's going to create some opportunities for you in the future. Thanks. Thank you.